Uh, so today I'm going to take you around the Cosworth. Um, it got me to the wedding. Yeah, it happened. Um, no problem at all. Um, I, I'll put some pictures of that in now, just for interest. And we're going to look at a couple of jobs that uh, still need doing. I wanted to do them before the wedding, but didn't get a chance. So the uh, adjustable steering column for rake and reach, the clamp isn't clamping tight enough. The ignition cowling doesn't fit properly, it never has. Um, and I need to swap the barrel out because the barrel that's in there is a non-standard one. I've only got one key for it. And also the sat nav and front camera have lost power. So I suspect there's a wiring issue under the dash and it was me being lazy. I piggybacked onto a fuse connector that was there. I suspect that's got a bad connection on it. Probably from one of the crimps that's on there that was uh, on the loom when I got it. So let's have a quick look around the car and then we'll do some jobs. So a quick walk around of the Sierra. As you can see there, pretty looking thing. It wasn't. I'll insert a photograph of what it looked like when I bought it. Um, it had been stripped um, by my friend Gary. Um, so I bought the shell plus whatever else he had left of it. Um, including some interior parts, the rest I sourced elsewhere. I had to get the boot lid and the rear spoiler um, and the rear bumper, that came from up in the northeast. Uh, front bumper came from a mate Charlotte in Basildon. Uh, the wheels came from all over the place, some came from up in the northwest, uh, some came from locally in Essex. And then the, the engine, that came down on a pallet with the gearbox from Scotland along with the ECU and the loom. Um, the airbox came with that as well, as did the, the shield for the turbo, which has seen better days, but it still does its job. Um, it was from a G-Reg, no, from a H-Reg. So it had the, the twin um, fan belts on it. Um, I don't know whether you can see it's dark down there, but I've actually put the later serpentine uh, front end drive on there. Um, which is what it should be on a K plate. Obviously, ordinarily a K plate would have a CAT converter because the engine's out of a H non CAT. Uh, it was originally a red top rocker cover, but I've had it repainted. So I'm running non CAT, which is perfectly legal because it's for the engine year, not the body year. So whichever one is the oldest is the one that you go for when it comes to your emissions for MOT. Um, camera in the front grille. You can just about see it in there. I'll put my phone down. It's just there, and that's ideal for pulling into tight spaces. Um, it was originally a car with rainbow cloth, but I bought it with no interior. So I ended up going, as you can see, with the Raven leather. And the door cards, um, they've been retrimmed. So they were uh, like a, a retrim kit from, um, from eBay. Uh, so they are actually proper stitch leather rather than vinyl, so they won't shrink. Uh, they were an absolute nightmare to fit, but they don't look too bad. There's a few wrinkles in it, but it's leather, leather wrinkles anyway. Got the RS Option steering wheel, which um, I fitted recently. I've only driven it once with that on there, and it is so comfortable to hold. Much more comfortable than the standard wheel. In fact, I've got two of the standard wheels. I've got one over there and another one hanging up over there. They've got Escort cars with gear knob on there. Um, a nice Kenwood medialess radio in there. And underneath there is a, a period correct from the 90s um, Kenwood graphic equaliser, spectrum analyzer. Um, purists are going to hate this. But I've got three door clocks in there with a the boost gauge. Just fancied it, something different. Um, and where the alarm LED normally goes on top of the dash. Try and get the camera in there as best I can. Um, I've actually put a USB up there which is handy because then you haven't got huge amounts of trailing wires. I've just got a USB there going to my quad lock mount, which is uh, handy for the phone. It charges the phone up while I'm driving. And yeah, the seats and interior, really nice. And um, there were a few scabby bits on there, but uh, we, we repaired that with a bit of leather cream and leather filler. And then my friend Owen um, repainted the leather for me with uh, with the Raven die, and it's, um, if you're looking at the Raven die on eBay, it's the one with the picture of the 280 Brooklyn seats. Uh, that's the company I use, really good quality stuff. And I do go over it occasionally with a little bit of sponge if you get a bit of bulbs to wear, but it's not too bad really. Um, and then some other bits we've done to the car, so we, I've done. Reversing camera 
in where the boot lock would normally be. That was kind of Mark 1 prototype, if you like. Um, so that is just a standard boot lock housing drilled out to fit the camera in. The camera's just gorilla glued in place. Works all right, um, but it's pointing too horizontally. So I need to make another housing and angle the camera downwards a little bit so you can actually see the bumper and where you are. I mean, you, your field of vision actually starts about here. You know, where my foot is about here so um, you, you don't get any perception of how close to things you are until until you're about there uh, so yeah I did pop the boot it's an awful lot of rubbish in here but this is one of the one of the things that I built during lockdown so this is a, a, a subwoofer enclosure um, it's an MDF front panel um, and I actually made the uh, the back of it all out of fiberglass so I actually made a fiberglass plug and um, I covered, this is all covered in tape and whatever else and plastic. So then I glassed it up um, and then put a couple of these speaker connections on the back and it's all wired in there nicely. Um, rear speakers, um, I've put JBL component speakers in the standard Ford housings. You can see that. They fitted in there a treat and they got some custom made brackets that um, glue into the bottom of the speakers and allow the standard fold retaining clip brackets to hold them in place. And then, so yeah, same again with the front doors, got adapters in there with JBL five and a quarters in there, two ways. It sounds quite nice. Got the amp in the back as well. But yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with it. Just a little update, um, I've took the dash panel down and straight away, as soon as I took this down and released this, which is like I say, this is the thing that I don't like, it was the, um, the crimp connector put in with an inline fuse, um, there's the culprit, one of these horrible crimps that I don't like, I'll see if I've got one to jury rig it for now. I think I might replace this uh, inline fuse block for something else. Um, that's the takeoff that goes into the uh, front camera. So, um, yeah, I shall have a look, see if I can find one. I'll cut back in in a minute um, and I'll repair that. You see that wire's just come out. So it is something as simple as that. In fact, these both were extending because they're too short. All right, let's see what I've got. I'll come back in a minute. Unfortunately, the camera angle isn't going to be very good for this. Um, but I've got to basically solder some extensions in to the wires that are there so that fuse block will sit further back out of the way. It won't be tangled up around the column wire and I can strap it up, I think, further up under the dash and that won't uh, have any mechanical strain on it anymore. And I'll tidy up the rest of that wiring. So I'll have a go at that and then I'll cut back in in a minute. So I'm just going to cut in there um, just to see, hopefully you can see what I've done. So I've got the original wire going through one of the, um, I just call them rake end connectors, but they're, they're uh, heat shrink connectors, but they've got a solder ring in them, these ones. So you just warm them up, um, it melts at relatively low temperature. Um, and it shrink wraps around the, uh, the wires, around the insulators, and then obviously the conductors soldered together uh, in the little soldering. So I've done the other one, 
um, put heat shrink over the top of that and just taped up to the um, the awful crimp connector. I've crimped it, but I've also nipped it with a pair of pliers as well because they don't always crimp properly. Then that was the issue with the one that was on there already. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get my head under the dashboard and uh, and heat that up, warm it up, get it to to uh, solder into place, and then I'll cut back. Um, when it's all done and plugged in and we'll just test it So I um, had a quick look at the steering column um, For the adjustment uh, rake and reach as I said in the previous clip um, When the clamp was in the clamp position It wasn't clamping well enough um, if you if you lent on the wheel a little bit it would slide up and down or in and out um, and I've had a look. I'm just going to flip the camera around. What you've got is down here. There we go. There's a nut there, um, which a 13 mil socket fits over. And on the other side, where the, the lever is down here, there's another corresponding nut on that side. And I just gave, held one still, gave the other half a turn. And as you can see, it's now gripping nicely. So I pull the lever down, it slides up and down and in and out. But with the lever in the clamped position, it's nice and tight. So that's that one fixed. I thought that was going to be a harder job than that because one of my friends, Neil, was telling me about these plastic shims that are up in here and they often wear out and you can pack them out with pieces of cardboard under the nut and just, you know try and take the space up and I was potentially looking at taking these off getting them 3d scanned and 3d printed slightly bigger um, but it looks like I don't have to worry about that now so um, that was a bit of a result so yeah um, next job will be to tidy this wiring up here and here um, and see if I can get this cowling to fit better because it's never fit properly uh, the cowling itself the two halves that are on the seat over there they fit together lovely but when you put them around the column there's always a gap on the left hand side um, which was rather annoying but it just seemed to be that the wires are in the wrong place so I'm hoping that I can move. I mean, those wires have to sit in there. That's where they go. But I wonder, can these ones, can these ones go somewhere else? And that's, that is actually on a, on a wiring connector plug. They can only go one way. I don't quite really know. Unless, of course, that goes over the top of the column. Maybe that goes over the top of the column, not round the bottom. That goes over the top of the column. Oh. It would come over here. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe that's what it is. It didn't like being down there. Oh well, apologies for the dodgy camera work. Trying to hold the phone, look at what I'm doing and keep looking at the camera. But yeah, so see how we go with that. Um, I made another key, uh, which I keep with a spare wallet key. So I'll just cut it down so it just fits in the little coin pocket of my wallet without being too big. So yeah, pretty happy with that. So the next job is going to be rebuild all this. Um, I'll tidy this wiring up. Um, I'll try and get this to fit better and I'll cut back in when that's done so I've done a little bit of digging and uh, a bit of jiggery pokery with the car so this little saddle which is the clamp that screws um, between the mounting screws um, for the top of the indicator stalk and the top of the wiper stalk and headlight stalk so it goes through that screw there so this saddle sits on top and then the upper part of the cowling sits on that and the screw goes through and fastens it well what had happened was that at some point someone's put a screw in there that was too long 
and it had actually bent this up. So this part had come upwards because the screw was pushing down on the steering column underneath it. So this was pushing up and then because this base of this upper shroud sits down in this groove, this groove relative to the bottom had moved up and up and up. So much so that when you put the right screw in and put the cowling in place, you screw down to that, but there was a big gap between the upper cowling and the lower cowling. So there it is now, it's actually meeting, it's not perfect. Um, there's a little bit of sort of misplaced in, uh, in that direction, but, but uh, I'll take it. There was a quarter of an inch gap there before. This didn't meet back together, it does now. Um, so yeah, as I said, I did this yesterday, forgot to video it, so um, here it is now. So the problem with the cowling not fitting was that saddle bracket, it just been stretched. It was a second hand bracket when I got it, so obviously it's just been stretched before I got it, and that's why the cowling didn't fit properly. And the wiring issue, uh, so we traced that to be a broken wire that had pulled out of one of the crimps, going to that fuse block that was under the cowling, or near the cowling under the dash. As I suspected, that was the problem, so I've extended those wires move that fuse block back and it's now got decent crimps with heat shrink on there so that's not going to come apart again that's now a permanent fix the next video will be possibly on the little puma because uh, i need to create some space in the garage before the trans am gets here uh, so that will be a video on that that will be then going up for sale when it's done it's a 1.6 one owner car it's 70 or eighty thousand miles i've got a history like that with it um, it's got three original keys, uh, so one lady owner from New. I bought it from them during lockdown as a little project, but never got round to touching it. So that's got to get done. There will be another video on the Sierra when the clutch and wheel bearings get done. So that will be sometime in the future, probably in the next month, six weeks, hopefully to get started on that. Uh, and then around about that sort of time, hopefully six, seven weeks, will be when the Trans Am arrives. So to try and get some video footage from Dan when it gets loaded in uh, Michigan. See if we can get the shipping agent to do something when they offload it in New Jersey and, and, and putting it in the container. That would be nice if we can get a video of that. Not quite sure if I can get any video footage in, in Southampton when it uh, comes off the ship. I can, I can see if anyone will do that for me. And then there'll be video of me going to collect it and bringing it home. So lots to do um i don't get an awful lot of time to do the videos so i'll do them as and when but yeah have a good one please like subscribe and share uh, there will be more content and um, we'll do what we can to to bring some interesting stuff so catch you next time